This is AutoLine Daily reporting on the global automotive industry. Lighter, safer, stronger, quieter, and more sustainable. Tell us where you need to go and we'll help you get there. Dow Automotive Systems. We don't succeed unless you do. Looks like Alfa Romeo is hitting the brakes when it comes to developing more new models. It was going to come out with two more crossovers, a C segment one, smaller than the Stelvio, and an E segment one that would be bigger. But Auto Forecast Solutions reports that those crossovers were canceled. Also, Alfa canceled plans for a high-end sports car called the 8C and a small sports coupe called the GTV. We're guessing these new models would have cost a fortune to develop, but Alpha doesn't have the sales volume to support them. At least not yet. And speaking of cancellations, Auto Forecast Solutions says the next generation of the BMW 6 Series Gran Turismo is getting the axe. Apparently, BMW felt the Gran Turismo was going to cannibalize the lower end of the 8 Series Grand Coupe. And so it decided to keep the one that can make more money. Remember how we wondered why Toyota needed the Prius after it revealed the spectacular fuel economy for the new Corolla hybrid? Well, it is getting rid of the Prius to make way for the Corolla, sort of. Toyota just confirmed it is phasing out the smaller Prius C in the U.S. market. There's only about 700 of them left in stock, which at the current rate will take about two months to sell. For all of 2018, Toyota only sold about 8,400 Prius Cs in the U.S. While this ought to make President Trump happy, Honda could bring production of the Civic hatchback to North America. It's currently made at Honda's plant in the U.K., but as we know, it just announced it's closing that plant in 2021. Honda could bring hatchback production to North America because nearly 20% of all Civic sales here are hatchbacks, which is exceeding its expectations. Have you ever noticed that Citroen's concept cars look so much cooler than what you can buy in its showrooms? Check out this bug-like pod called the Ami One Concept, which is the automaker's vision of urban mobility for all. It's fully electric and is meant to take the place of sharing, buying, or renting in an urban environment. Citroen says it could see the Ami One being used for a five-minute trip, or up to a five-year long-term rental. And I gotta tell you, it sure looks a whole lot better than its namesake, the original Citroen Ami. This ugly bugger was sold in Europe in the 1960s and 70s and was instantly nicknamed the Atomic Cockroach. I mean, can you imagine being the design chief who signed off on this monstrosity? Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires. Your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, advanced materials that deliver better results, and by ExxonMobil. Seems that every time you turn around, another automaker is announcing yet another restructuring. Now Ford says it's going to get out of making heavy trucks in Brazil, and it's going to close its plant in São Bernardo do Campo. Even though Ford stopped making semis in the U.S. decades ago, it continued to make them in Brazil. Well, not anymore. It's also dropping the F4000 and F350 in Brazil, which are kind of equivalent to its Super Duty trucks in the U.S. Closing the plant and dropping these models doesn't come cheap. Ford will pay out roughly $460 million to employees, suppliers, and dealers. And Ford says it's now going to concentrate on light pickups and SUVs in the South American market. We're starting to see a lot of teaser images coming out as automakers get ready for the Geneva Auto Show. Subaru released this picture of the Visiv Adrenaline concept. It has shown the Visiv Tourer concept and the Visiv Performance concept in the past. And this one kind of looks like a combination of both, a performance utility vehicle. Skoda is giving us an idea of what the interior will look like in its Vision IV concept which is an all-electric vehicle based on VW's MEB platform. Note the floating infotainment screen and the two-spoke steering wheel. Mercedes gave this overhead shot of its Geneva booth. Somewhere in there is the EQV, what Mercedes says is nearly production-ready 
and will be the world's first SUV in the premium segment with purely battery electric drive. Now, Tesla might dispute that claim with the Model X, and Jaguar might dispute it with the I-Pace, but Mercedes must have some little nuance that the lawyers signed off on to be able to make this claim. Aston Martin confirmed it's making a new hypercar, currently called the 003. It says the car is a direct descendant of the Valkyrie, but more for the road, including space for luggage. The 003 is powered by a turbocharged gas-electric hybrid engine, and only 500 coupe versions will be made. It's expected to go on sale in late 2021. Electric cars can deliver blistering performance, but do you know how electric motors work? or how you can design them for better efficiency? Me neither. That's why we have Dave Fulton from Borg Warner coming on AutoLine After Hours tomorrow. He's an EV powertrain expert who will teach us the modern day equivalent of rejetting the carb, milling the head, and polishing the ports. So join me, Gary Vasilash, and Henry Payne from the Detroit News for a deep dive into electric performance. And that's it, no more AutoLine Daily today but we will be back here again tomorrow.